What is up guys, welcome back. So this is part 2 of my beginner guide series. I decided to make this because I realized there wasn't really a guide for beginners. Not, like There wasn't one that's like dedicated towards newer players. Um, there, were, there were a lot of like, you know, like try, how to auto B10 and then like, we're, I'm nowhere near that yet. But um, I did gain a few things or I didn't learn a few things after playing this game for about two weeks. I've started this game really late compared to a lot of the other players that are playing this game, but I, I think I've learned pretty fast and I've progressed pretty fast as well. So this is kind of just like a message to me, or to myself, if I were to start the game all over again, like just, you know, um, you know, just like, it's it's kind of like a message to myself if I were to all of a sudden lose my memories and had to begin this game again. Um, just some tips that I, I would give to myself if I, and, and some things I wish I knew when I first started this game. So, first things, uh, this is the second part. The, there's a first part talking about what you what you should do, like, for, like the very first time you start the game. Um, this, this is mainly talking about where to farm, because you're probably... You probably progressed a little, a little bit on your missions, a little bit on your stories. You're kind of stuck on the next level. You don't know where to actually go, um, and you you want to farm up and get your monsters a bit stronger in order to keep going with the story. Um, but you're not sure which monsters to raise and where to farm. So this is basically a video telling you a, a little bit about that. So this um, actually a lot of the things in this video I might not actually use the game because I. There's, there's a few resources online that I, I found pretty useful. Um, well, actually three things that like I, I, would, I would look at. Um, the first thing is the first thing is the, the, the wiki, uh, the wiki with all the monsters. This is a really, really good list because it's organized with um, basically their, their stats. Um, you, can, you can actually click in and see, see all their stats at, at every single level. So if you like, if you if you click him, you can see like at Evo one, um, at if you raise him to four stars at max level, how like what his stats would be. So it's it's really it's a really really useful resource to be able to, you know, just look at um, which mo the skills of each monster. You can also organize it by the types of, types of skills. I've been I like to theory craft a lot in this game, so I, I use this quite a lot. And I, I actually look through a lot of the monsters, and I learned a lot of their skills. And um, pretty much know like almost all what all the monsters do. Um, even if I don't, I can still just come back and refer to this list really fast, so it doesn't really matter. The second thing is an experience table. This actually is just just for reference. Uh, the first first one is this is really really good. Probably the only really like. Um, dedicated website for for monster super league at the moment because the game is only out for like two months there's not a lot of like you know resources out there that people made and i don't know how to program web pages and shit like i don't know how to properly make one make a list like this um and it's it's uh you know i'm already really thankful that someone someone made a wiki anyways the, the second thing is an exp list um this basically is really simple the first part is talks about you know the exp required for every single level you don't really need to look at this you just kind of need to get a feeling like how many times um a exp you need in order to progress in the next level like this is like four times the exp it takes um from a you know from a five star max level um in order to get a six star max level at the at the last level it's like literally four times the the amount of exp so you literally need to do four times as much stages to get that exp or um you know, eat fruits and shit. And but the the important part of this list, I think, is the EXP to energy ratio. Um, all you really need to do, keep in mind is if you go through if you go through the the stages, if you go through every single map, the the further you get, the more EXP you get. So the um, if you if you look at the list again, the, the EXP for normal for normal like for for hard stages are a lot higher than normal stages. Well, it's like 3,000 more. Like, if you look at Star Sanctuary, because I'm gonna use Star Sanctuary as an example because it's like the last map. Um, although I can't really farm it, but uh, I can't farm it on extreme yet because I, I'm not, I'm not exactly that strong. Um, 
But you know, Star Sanctuary on Extreme costs five energy. On Normal, costs three energy, and it gives you twice the amount of EXP. It also, um, I'm I haven't done a lot of runs, and I haven't lifted it down, but. Like through my observations, I've noticed that Star Sanctuary on Extreme also gives like you know twice the amount of gold that you get from normal. So on normal, it costs three energy. On on Extreme, it costs five energy. So with an extra two energy, you're getting more than more than two times the amount of EXP. You're getting like a 2.2 times EXP, um, while only ha only um, investing 66% more energy. That's that's basically what I'm trying to get across here. So the the point is, you're you're gonna get a lot more energy if you farm on extreme versus if you farm on normal mode. Um, but the chart is here because obviously, for even for me right now, I'm n I'm not able to farm Star Sanctuary on extreme, which is probably the best energy efficiency. Um, but I am able to farm like Ar I'm able to farm this um, Arya Lake like uh, relatively stably. I can I think I can farm up to Mirage Ruins as well relatively stably without um, without the use of my friend's reps. I can do it myself and I can do it with about three monsters. So I can use a fourth monster to to um, you know put it in and and get and get exp as well. So I don't have to rely on that fourth monster. So I can um, I can farm up to Arya Lake. Um, but I, I'm not able to farm like you know any further. So you can use this list to kind of calculate: is it better to farm on on Arya Lake on on Extreme, or is it better to farm on Star Sanctuary on Hard? You can kind of use this list um, depending on where you can farm. To give you an example. So that's that's the that's the second part. Um, so basically, as a general rule of thumb, you want to farm as as far as possible. Like, if you can farm on it on the hard on the hardest difficulty, as far down as possible um, on the map as you can, it will give you the best energy efficiency in terms of farming. And the the third thing I, I wanted to um, talk about is well, the second thing I wanted to talk about is is um, a little bit more about monsters, and that is in terms of the the tier list. Um, this is the very the the newest tier list. And I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I don't think the tier list is really all that relevant. It's only really relevant the first few days of your game um, when you're playing. It's an it's an okay determination of a certain monster's strength um, based on their usefulness in the game. But there's the game is constantly updating, so there's going to be new things coming out um, very very soon. So you you never know when a certain monster is going to be really really good for a certain thing. So you know you can't just be like okay uh, the stupid um, what succubus is a C and therefore I'm gonna just feed her like you know no matter what um, you know may maybe she has a certain skill I have actually I have no idea what the wood succubus does you you really don't want to like just feed anything away based on the tier list but it'll give you a pretty good idea like for example you have a fire um, you have like a fire Yuki and a fire succubus and I think in my opinion I think the fire Yuki is also a little bit stronger than the fire succubus they're very very similar and they rank the fire Yuki as S they rank the fire succubus as A so I, I, I agree with that I think it's somewhat accurate like that the um, fire Yuki is is a better monster to raise in the fire succubus and um, this is just an example of how you might be able to use the tier list to determine um, which is the better of two monsters that are very very similar. Obviously, you need to you need to use your own knowledge of the game, so that's why like I think it's really really good to use to just look at the wiki instead. And um, if you click in the wiki, you can get really really accurate descriptions of each monster's certain skills. So like you know you'll you'll see that um, you know although although it, it says like adrenaline here, um, if you click on another monster that has adrenaline, like for example the uh, the Wood Valkyrie or something like that. Um, the adrenaline of the Light Cosmo and the adrenaline of the Wood Valkyrie are very very different. The Wood Valky Valkyrie's adrenaline gives 100% to restore 20% of own HP when he attacks, but the Cosmo is a healer and he, he is able to restore 10% of the allies max HP whenever he attacks. 
Um, so the Wood Valkyrie, although their skills have the same name, um, it's it's completely different. Um, the skills are completely different. Also, if you have skills that have like a grants a certain percent chance to do something, um, even sometimes, although it's the same skill, they'll they'll have different percentages of activation, and therefore certain monsters will will be higher tier than, than others um, that have similar abilities. I think a, a really good example is if I um, let me just take a look at a two two sappers like really really popular sappers. The I, I, need, I really just need to go down the list and find something with sap. Um, the fire purse and the water yuki. Uh, these are like pretty much like everyone has everyone can pretty much agree that these two are like the best um, sappers in the game, and the. The fire, the fire purse is the, the stronger one of the two because she has a 100% chance to inflict sap, whereas the water yuki only has a 60% chance on her second skill to inflict sap. Um, and you can use this to determine as well which monsters you want to raise when they have very very similar skills. And I think that's that's pretty much all I can do to help you right now. A lot of this this in the game is um, it, it depends on what monsters you pull it's it's um, it's not that hard to get certain four stars in this game so therefore it's a lot uh, people are going to be using a lot a lot of different monsters they're not going to be there's not a lot of like, cookie cutter builds um, in this game which is a really really good thing which is something I'm really happy about it creates a lot more diversity and makes things a lot more interesting as well um, when it comes to me raising my own team so yeah, I rambled on for 11 minutes and hopefully this helped you out and I'm going to be continuing this series as well. I'm going to be going a little bit more in-depth in the next episode and I'm also thinking about um, making some content in regards of covering like the latest patch, patch notes and stuff like that. So hopefully, hopefully you enjoyed this. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.